It is disgusting just how much people love this car. Judging by the crash test, I can sort of see why. More than that, the Consumer Reports rating is an 88, literally the highest in its segment. The only thing that wasn't the highest was the predicted reliability, which was still an 80. It's actually pretty surprising that even though its competitors have similar inventory levels, all 19,000 Subaru Foresters are 2024. Do not pull the trigger on the 2024 Forester until you watch this. I'm going to show you if I think a smoking hot deal is even possible right now. I'll run you through inventory, tell you the invoice price, crunch some lease numbers, and lastly, I'll examine the resale and use market values. Sound good? Hop in. Other brands are stocked with leftover 2023. So if you're looking for a deep discount, these two other brands you're seeing up top may be the best better deal. I am definitely going with the limited because it's popping out at me big time, but my backup would definitely be a premium. The one I've got picked out from Car Gurus is about 35,321. Subarus suck to negotiate. It's got about a 6.7% markup between their cost and MSRP, and you should definitely shoot for about $33,000 before taxes and fees. With about 18,000 units sitting there, I'm pretty sure at least one of the dealers around here would give it up at invoice sometime at the end of a winter month just like this one. You're going to need the discount because residual values after about five years really start to trickle down. So if you do plan on keeping it, plan for about 60% or so to remain after five years, assuming you kept it in decent condition. I do have to say financing it at five years is a bit tricky. Although it's got a 5.9% promotional APR, that seems a bit better than the national average. Yeah, but you shouldn't rule out refinancing when rates hopefully get better. If you're a current Subaru lessee. The only rebate or incentive available at the moment, sadly, is a few payments that Subaru is offering to waive if you've got a lease mature. The lease program was surprisingly good. Like, very, very good. A 62% residual and a 0.00166 money factor plugged in into the lease calculator, assuming we got it at invoice price, assuming we're paying the inception fees due at start, and assuming that you've hit like and subscribe, we'd be talking about $400 a month and that's not including your state sales tax. If you're curious what some of the other trims lease out for, I've put some estimates that I think they'll go for in the summary text for this video in the description below. I'm giving this Forrester lease an A-, minus. like really, I'm not kidding, an A-, minus. not so much because the lease program is over the top excellent, it could have actually been a little bit better in my opinion, but the fact that this is coming from Subaru is a major plus. The five-year residual, if you were planning to purchase and keep it for five years, is about $21,000. And this will probably produce a trade-in value at the lowest, probably around $17,000. Use these figures to gauge how much negative equity is possible in your situation when you plug it into a loan calculator. There's less than 2,000 three-year-old clean foresters in the U.S. right now when I search cargurus.com. These all had about 40,000 miles and a limited was about $25,000. The premium about $22,000. I wouldn't just buy it. I'd even buy it, then lease it too. Just a reminder, guys, in the description below, you'll find a lot of valuable tools to help you in all areas of your car search. And if you found this information useful, please consider subscribing. Just click right here, please. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.